Hello and welcome to this video introducing you to CIRAC CAD CAM technology. My name is Dr. B and in this video we are going to do a walkthrough of the CIRAC Acquisition Center with OmniCam and CIRAC software. I'm going to go through the software and show you the different screens and menus you will see when scanning and designing a restoration. This video is created so you can follow along. I would recommend that you have a model or Dentiform that has been prepped for a full coverage restoration. Today I am going to use this stone model and you could even use a patient, although I don't think you'll want to have this video playing with a patient in the chair. So let's stick to the models and Dentiforms for now. <laughs> I'm going to scan, design, and mill a restoration for tooth number 30. If at any point I am talking too fast or if you have trouble keeping up, simply pause the video or rewind the video to an earlier point and pick up where you left off. Before we jump into the software, let's take a look at the machine. The base of this machine is where all the major computer parts are located. This is a wheeled device and can be transported from room to room. On top of the base is the monitor screen. The screen can easily be turned on and off by hitting the screen power button. Below the screen is where you will find the keyboard and trackball for the machine. The keyboard has many of the standard features you would find on any keyboard, but it can feel a little weird when you first use it. In my experience, I find that I cannot type fast on this keyboard like I can on other computers. The trackball and buttons below the trackball act as a standard mouse. Instead of moving a mouse around, you move the ball instead. When we get into the software, I will go over some of the little features you will want to know about the trackball and the buttons when manipulating the digital models. The last thing I want to point out is the OmniCam camera. You can see that it is attached to the main unit or the base. There is a locking arm that keeps this camera in place when it is not being used. I would always keep this in the lock position when not using the camera. This is to prevent accidental bumping or dropping of the camera. These cameras are very expensive to replace if they are damaged. When you are ready to use the OmniCam camera, unlock it and pick up the camera. The camera is held the same way you would hold a handpiece. Where the camera lens touches the main part of the machine, you will see a black circular area with an exclamation sign on it. This is the heating element that will warm up the lens inside the camera and help to minimize fogging when in use. Serona recommends that before you use this machine on a patient that you turn the machine on and let it warm up the lens for about 15 minutes prior to use. So let's go ahead and put the camera back down. On the keyboard, at the top right of the keyboard, you will see the power button for the machine. If this is not on, go ahead and turn your machine on at this time. Once the machine is on, if you have not opened the CIRAC software, you will do that now. At the time of this recording, we are running software version 5.1.3. Of course, Serona now has the CIRAC Prime Scan, which is the latest and the greatest replacement for the OmniCam. Minus the upgraded camera and touchscreen, the software that we will be using looks identical to the Prime Scan machine. So after you open up the software, you will see the start screen. At the top left of the screen, you will see the dense ply Serona symbol, which looks like the letter D with an S inside of it. If you click on the symbol, you will see the system menu populate. You may notice that some of the options in the system menu are grayed out and not available at this point in the process, but you can still visualize the options available. Sometimes you will see an icon for the start screen. That will give you the option to go back to the start screen within the software at any point while you're using it. Save uh, case allows you to save work as you progress through the case. Save As allows you to save the file under a new name and create a different save file. Import Case will open a case saved on another drive or on the computer somewhere. Export Case gives you the option to change the file type and location of save. This is helpful when you want to transfer the case to another computer or send to another location. 
Um, the Connect Case Center is an option where you, uh, your dental clinic can actually send cases or files to a Serono Connect registered laboratory. Both the clinic and the lab have to be registered to use this feature, but it makes the transfer of files easy and fast. License Manager allows you to add vouchers or permissions to the system. Configuration is where you manage the global settings for the software, such as restoration parameter settings, devices, and system settings. Windows mode allows you to minimize the Cirex software screen and navigate other features on the computer's desktop. This can come in handy if you have multiple providers sharing the Cirex machine at the same time, and one provider wants to say open and start a new case, while another provider is milling a separate case. All right, so that is the system menu, and this menu can be accessed at any point while you're using the software by clicking on the Dent Supply Serona symbol in the upper left of the screen. At the bottom of the screen is an option to show patients um, or search patients and cases you've already entered into the system. This is handy if you ever have to go revisit a case for whatever reason. If you do multiple restorations on different days on the same patient, you can go back to the patient's file and add a new restoration to their existing file as opposed to creating a new patient every time they come in for a new restoration. For new patients on the start screen, you will select add new patient at the bottom of the screen. Go ahead and click on add new patient. Next, you are going to see a screen that asks you for information about the patient. Here you will enter the patient's last name, first name, and date of birth. For the patient ID, you can enter the social security number or any number that you like. I usually just enter the last four of the patient's social security number. For dentist, add your last name as the treating provider. So for this exercise, as we go through the software, we are gonna scan some models. So for this section, we will make some things up for our mock patient. Last name can be Doe, as in D-O-E, and first name can be John, or any similar variation for our fake patient. You do not need to change the date of birth if you don't want to, and the patient ID can be one, two, three, four, and for dentist, just put in your last name. After you have all that information entered, go ahead and click on add case at the bottom of the screen. 